Good morning everyone and welcome to my stitch with me. Today is Tuesday, Tuesday the 19th of April. My goodness how time flies and today I've decided to record a stitch with me. Um, I don't think I've done one for a little while actually because I've been so busy and um, mostly I've kind of been doing lives which has sort of suited my schedule a little bit better. So yeah, here I am to do a little bit of stitching with you. So I hope you stick around and we can have a little chat as I stitch. So first of all, this uh, chart that I'm working on is called Fireplace. It's actually a scene from the uh, Stitch in Time, which you can see in the little corner there. And it's, it's a beautiful scene. I really warmed to this one when I first saw it, the lovely lady doing her embroidery and a child um, watching her stitch. And it looks lovely. I love the vintage feel to this and it's, it's very quaint and pretty. Um, a little bit of a challenge with confetti. And just to explain how I started this chart, I started by doing diagonals uh, from the top left, working across. And then I got my confidence head on and I started doing um, some cross country or the typewriter method, which I explained in, in a different live video. And I started working all the way across the top, picking up the first symbol at the top left and going across. And sometimes, um, you know, tweaking it a little bit to suit my taste, because down here, you might find that you just want to go and fill in little areas. So that's okay too. I mean, you don't have to stick to a particular method 100%. You can deviate a little or do whatever suits you best. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in a little bit more of this area here. I'm going to start using up these park threads. Now, I'm never going to say never when it comes to parking in future, but I'm actually enjoying the freedom of cross country at the moment. I don't know how long that feeling is going to last, but hopefully <laughs> it lasts a while because you know, by having the confidence to go cross country, I have actually made a huge amount of progress, believe it or not, in a very short while. Now, I don't even think that I have been doing this chart for probably for not more than a month. And just look how much progress I have got with this chart. Um, obviously, it's the journey that counts. I'm not trying to win a race or anything, but yeah, I'm just I'm just enjoying that I'm actually seeing progress a little bit quicker than when I'm doing sort of like row by row, which is more um, of a method way to do it. And it's, it's just that little bit slower because obviously you're not getting as many stitches done as quickly as going cross country. But hey, you know, it all depends really on what method suits you the best. And I think it's probably best to stick to that rather than trying to find a method that makes it all really, really fast. Because, I mean, you may be able to go fast, but are you really enjoying going fast, you know? So I'm working cross country and just picking my stitches as I go. Not really going in any particular direction, to be honest, but trying to go in the right direction, whatever that is, whatever the symbols are telling me I should go in. And that's kind of how I'm enjoying doing it. So now I've got, sometimes you get to like a fork in the road, is what I like to call it. And it's kind of like where you've actually got several possibilities of which direction to go in. Um, so yeah, I can kind of put a spanner in the works because then you think, oh my goodness, you know, I can go this way or I can go that way. And that's when the decisions come in with the cross country rather than when you are doing sort of diagonal rows or whatever. If you're doing diagonal cross country, that's also very um, flexible, pretty much the same thing but just having like little boundaries as well. So my goodness, what a week it has been for me, or at least what a month it has been for me. I have been going around in circles, hunting for a place of my own, um, 
or for my family. And it's so tiring. I mean, I thought housework was tiring, but actually looking for houses is 10 times worse. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, and then putting so much energy into looking and then, you know, making bids and then finding out that you're not successful is, is the worst because you think, well, oh, that was such a waste of time. But I came with good news on my Sunday night, Sunday evening live, and I was telling everybody that I have had an acceptance. And yeah, so we shall be moving in approximately five or six weeks, depending on, you know, all the stuff that people have to prepare. And the place is absolutely empty, which is great. So we don't have to wait for anybody to go. It's just empty. I mean, it's got flooring and it's got a, a brand new kitchen. So there's that that I don't have to worry about. But there is no beds and there is no furniture. So that is where we're going to have to get some of that stuff in before we move. And so it's going to be like a really tight and busy two or three weeks where you probably won't see me very much. But when I come back, I will come back in a new place. So that's going to be exciting. Now, I've lost my way again. So there's that stitch, that stitch. It's one, two, that one down here. I think I have to do this stitch. I hadn't done this stitch. Um, so yeah, it'll all be really cool when I get my new place and I'll have a craft room or at least half a craft room because I'm going to have to share the spare room with my husband so that he can you know partake of some of it and use it for his work and stuff so but it's a good size so we should be able to should be able to figure that out between us so I'm kind of excited and a little bit daunted at the same time. Um, it's kind of difficult to know what sort of style you want to do your place because there are so many options out there. And I'm, I'm like I was saying on Sunday, I'm indecisive enough when it comes to making decisions. I'm just terrible. I, I just kind of stand there not knowing what decision to make so that's not going to be a great help but I've got a head start so I've got a few weeks to look around and I tend to go more for practical above um, you know kind of pretty exterior kind of thing but I do want it to look really nice so I'm going to have to kind of go somewhere in between practical and stylish I think if I can do both that would be great oh my goodness there's a lot of greens in this chart and I think there's a stitch threatening to come out from the front so it was a fairly quiet Easter not a huge amount going on um, we did get our bid in just before Easter and we kind of got accepted on Good Friday so yeah it was Good Friday and then it just all turned quiet again because obviously everybody's doing their own thing with their families that's what they do here some people go away for Easter and you know take some time out from work we kind of stayed here and just did our normal thing because we figure it's going to be, you know, a busy time coming up. So we kind of need all the rest that we can get. And also I have been starting to sort of clear out cupboards, giving things away to the charity, to the charity shops that I know that I'm not going to want or need or use. Um, that's always a good thing to do is to be a little bit ruthless because I have so much kind of junk that I know I'm not going to, to bother with. 
and I really only want to take what has value to me. So that is also what I've been doing. So yeah, a little bit of stitching, a little bit of sorting out things and preparing myself for the crazy weeks to come. So I don't know how much of this chart I'm going to get done before the end of the year, but it has kind of been a little bit of a focus piece in the last while. I don't exactly know why, but I just know that that's kind of how it's gone and I'm fine with that. I mean, I'm just really going with what it is that's calling to me, even if it's not exactly in my whip go draw. You know, I just want to be enjoying what I'm doing really. Lots of different greens and blues. Oh, there goes the ambulance. Without fail, every morning, there's a police car or something driving by. One of the things you kind of have to get used to, living in the middle of a city. Now, this thread is getting a little short. I may get two more stitches out of this. So it's not going to be a long stitch with me, just a little chat and a little stitching because I don't really like to do endlessly long videos, which I don't know. I mean, maybe some of you like that, but you know, sometimes you can kind of run out of things to say, <laughs> especially if there hasn't been that much going on. Um, of course, there's been a lot going on with me, but nothing else other than what I've just said which is that we'll be moving very soon. I wonder if I can get this stitch down here. I always try to get just that one more stitch or two extra stitches because I don't really want it to come out of the needle because that's kind of frustrating when the thread comes out of the needle and it's a really tiny bit of thread. It's like, ah, now I have to re-thread it just to end the thread. But I'll show you what I've been doing to end my threads in a second. So this is the last stitch I'm going to do here. So basically, some of you might be doing this yourselves, because quite a few of us do it this way, is I bring my thread down. Now this, this area here is all gonna get covered up, right, with stitches. So I bring my needle down what would be in a grid, gridded uh, fabric, about two squares. And I push my needle like in between the weave. I'm using 22 count here. So there's, there's two threads going down and two threads going across in the weave. And I'm pushing my needle right through because in between there is what gives it a little bit of tension, believe it or not. If you push your needle through an actual hole, it's quite loose but pushing my needle through a thread uh, in between the square, it's like right in the middle of the square, basically, it has a bit of tension and I found that it does not come out at the back. So there's a straight line of thread at the back there that's gonna get covered up. And then all I simply do is snip it with the teeny weeniest tail. Um, teeny weeniest tail, just there, and then all my thread, all my crosses over here are going to cover that up. So no longer worried about it. I've been doing that all the way along. And then when I check the back, I can see that everything's covered. What I don't want to do is to end my thread, for instance, somewhere where there's a lot of stitches because it won't get covered up. So I'm always trying to work downwards and bring my ending threads down. And that kind of, that kind of works really well. 
So let's see, the beauty of the cross country is that we can, we can say, let's go here, let's go there. Where am I going to go now? Gosh, there's quite a bit of confetti now in these areas, to be honest. And I've noticed that there's some stitches up here that need filling in. So maybe we'll go that way. Um, and the other thing is a lot of these greens are very similar. So if they're not on the actual bobbin, they can get confused, confusing. Um, if they're loose, you have to go double checking which color it is. So what I'm going to do here to start my thread is I'm going to push my needle through the front. Let's see, where am I starting? I'm starting up here. So I'm going to push my needle, say about here, with a teeny knot. And then, oops. And then I'm going to go up and do my stitch and then I will cover it up again with the other stitches and then I can cut that knot off. When I need to. Sometimes I have actually forgotten to go back and cut the knot off and I've actually come to the knot to do another stitch and, and then thought, oh, well I can definitely take that off now. It's been sitting there for ages. So that's that one. Oh gosh, I'm wondering if I've gone into the right area. Uh oh, I think I've gone into the wrong place. No worries, these things happen, especially with cross country. I'm just going to unpick. I'm glad you saw this because this is something that could happen to anyone. So basically, where I left that knot, I have gone into the wrong hole. Okay. Okay, that's easily done when you are doing cross country and some of the little patterns look the same as other places. Oh, I, so I'm going to start that stitch again. There's no point in me editing this out because we all make mistakes and one of the good things is showing how we correct them. So I've just pulled that out and I think now I'm in the right place. So it's along here. Okay, so we're down here. So what I did was I went in the right place, but I now came and did a stitch all the way down this end and I was supposed to do my stitch up here. But never mind. These things happen. And sort of chatting away along doesn't really help when you're trying to count your spaces. So it's so much better to frog one stitch than it is to frog 100 stitches. <laughs> so as I was saying, the little knotty bit at the front will just get cut off. And the one over one is an actual dream to get through the canvas. It does not feel at all tight or compromised by all the other stitches in the way and all the other threads at the back. So it's a continuous working downwards all along the top. Um, there's no particular order or fashion to it right now. I'm just kind of enjoying the freedom of working little cross country sections. And I think I've just gone down the wrong hole again. So that's no, that's right. That's there. 
Sometimes you think you've gone down the wrong hole, but you haven't. You've done it right. Your brain's just trying to fool you. There's quite a lot of gaps at the moment, so I have to be extra careful when there's a lot of gaps. Now here where I'm doing a stitch is right next to the knotty knot, so I can probably cut it off after this stitch. So there's a lot more greens to go here before I get to some other colours. I'll just do these two stitches. So I'm in no rush to finish any particular stitch amount. At the moment I've kind of left everything quite fluid and flexible. I don't want to be, you know, beholden to any particular goal right now because of the current situation of, of having to move house. And I think that's going to be stressful enough without trying to do stitch goals as well as moving all my stuff from one place to another. So yeah, we are on flexible mode, which is kind of really the only way that I'm going to get through this sanely um, <laughs> is to just be practical and say whatever gets done gets done and let's just enjoy it while we can and when we can. There is no need to panic or run or do any kind of rushing with our stitching. And like that, you find that you get quite a bit done because you don't have the pressure. Once the pressure's gone, you're happy just to keep going. Two, three, on this stitch here. So I can now cut off that little, that little tiny piece and it's gone. So yeah, simply snaking, not so much snaking as just like dotting around, filling in little areas. And I think you find when you work this method, you kind of start to see little patterns and it becomes easier to your eye to know where to jump in between these patterns. I haven't had to really frog anything yet. Okay, touch wood. I'm never going to have to frog anything, right? Let's just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> and I'm not feeling comfortable about snaking down with my thread really, really far, like crazily far down, because I don't want to tempt fate. And I'm quite comfortable at the moment. I think it's making more sense to me to be working along uh, horizontally even, because that's where all the colours are gathered. And it's also safe ground, because if I have to, if I do have to unpick something, I'm not straying too crazily away, like down here. But again, I think this is good practice, and I think the CC method actually keeps you on your toes. And I think you do actually get better at counting as you go. Because I was terrible initially. I kept saying to people that I couldn't even count 10 <laughs> in my rows. I would be doing like maybe missing a, nine, a tenth stitch and only doing nine or something. But I've got so much better through practice and having to be careful. Um, and paying attention. I think the number one reason why we make mistakes is we're not paying attention. We're not focusing. Um, we're dreaming about other stuff, which I do often. I do dream, daydream. So 
So trying to be extra cautious. And I know I've done fine now because I'm following all these green stitches along. And they make little patterns. So sometimes you don't have to count. Your brain just says, oh, you have to go and do a stitch next to that L pattern of stitches or it's like, they're like Lego bricks, aren't they really? You just keep adding on to your little bricks. Now, I don't know about this. One, two, three. Oh, talking about making mistakes. Now I've just gone and seen a pattern that looks a bit strange. Two, one, two, three, four. One. I'm just going to go and do this. Yeah, I think it's okay. It's my brain getting into panic now. After saying frogging, do not say the word. If you say the word too loudly, the frog turns up to claim his word. Frogging. Ah, don't say it. We are stitching fantastically today. One, two, three. It's all going well and will continue to go well. See, all these good mantras actually help. And it is a gloriously sunny day here in Edinburgh. The sun is shining, so I'm really looking forward to hopefully getting a walk in a little bit later on. Um, sounds lovely. And I have two more stitches here. Okay, let's see. So these ones are a little bit further out, but I'm going to try. One, two, three. One, two, three. Down, down. That's how I count. One, two, three. Down, down. And double check around the other patterns around you. Always double check that you've done it right. Where are we going now? If there is anywhere else to go. Okay, that's cool. So we're over up to the right again. Up, left, left, left. Up, left, left, left. Okay, up, left, left, left. I think it's here. Am I right? Double check, double check. That's that stitch. One, two, three, four. Yes. And even count squares between one area and another, just to make sure between a different stitch, count between a different stitch, to double check that you're in the right place. So this is looking good. And again, when I finish this thread, now I could continue to snake down all the way down here, but I'm not going to do that because I don't have a lot of other stitches around here. And like I said, I don't want to tempt fate because I've been doing so well. And you really can. I mean, if you want, you can snake down and end your thread or you can just be more cautious. So we've got a whole run of stitches along here in 413, which is kind of like a greenish gray. six stitches so I have to remember to count. It is kind of hard to watch um, TV programs and count at the same time I have to admit. I'm either fully immersed on the TV screen or I'm fully immersed on the counting. I'm not going to dare to do both when I'm cross country. I was a little bit more flexible with the rows because I had well, I was just doing one stitch after the other, next to each other. So, you can still go wrong, trust me, but if you go wrong, it wouldn't be as drastic as if you go along wrong during 
one of these threads along here. I think this picture is going to look amazing in my new place. I may save it for the craft room. I really need something special for the living room, which I'm thinking could be the Riverwalk charm because that's going to look crazily good when it's finished. But it's going to take me a good bit of time to finish that one. So I'm not holding my breath really. Right. Now I think a lot of these threads will be covered up. Oops, I did go down the wrong hole there for a few seconds. So a lot of these stitches are happening on a kind of vertical level, sorry, horizontal level. And that's good because then you're going to get more filled in that way. But it's just basically the direction that the stitches are going in. I mean, you're just following, following the guide. Uh, there's those three. So it's down here. Just following the way the stitches are going. Because they do tend to have a pattern of their own. So if your chart has symbols that are going in different directions than that, you can just maybe, unless you're stuck to one particular method, you can just maybe tweak it to suit the pattern. Like no one says you have to stitch every chart the same way if you don't want to. And I know plenty of people do different um, techniques on different patterns. Okay, that's where I'm gonna stop with that one. So I'm gonna bring my thread down, push it through the middle of the weave so it has a, a little bit of tension. And I can feel there's a bit of tension there when I pull the thread. So I'm not pushing it, I'm not pulling the thread through a hole, I'm pulling it through the middle of the stitch. And I leave the tiniest piece sticking out because that's gonna disappear as well when you push your needle through. And that's another one done. That is another one done. So, yeah, filling in more details around this bird, I think, at the moment, looks like a good way to go. Um, and constantly working down filling in these gaps because I don't want to have, say, all this area filled in and then have to go back and do a gap up here where I've nowhere to leave my, um, where I've nowhere to end the thread, because I don't want to end a thread right down here at the very bottom of the thing. So, yeah, if I keep filling in around the top areas, slowly working downwards, not too far, that is kind of working for me at the moment. And I did say I was going to go back and work some more of these part threads because they're just there to be done. So that looks like a good idea. We can get them out of the way. So don't go thinking that I hate parking. I do not hate parking. I absolutely love parking. I am just sort of invested in what I'm doing at the moment and enjoying it. And who knows the day I will wake up and say, okay, I've had enough of this now. Let's get back to business, back to the parking and the rows. I just do not know. I cannot predict the future. So whatever works for me at any given time is what I am vested in. Whatever I'm enjoying, because at the end of the day, it's my hobby and I can 
switch and change, stick to the same, do whatever appeals to me at the time. Okay, I'm going to get a few more of these stitches in here. And slowly you can see as I'm filling in stitches that I'm slowly losing my diagonal line, <laughs> which I'm not going to cry about. Okay, one here. I enjoyed it whilst I was doing it and I may go diagonal again, but I have to admit it is a little bit faster doing this method because for every couple of stitches I used to do here I would be changing my changing my thread on my needle which I was quick at doing and I was happy with doing don't get me wrong I was fine with it but you know statistically it is a little bit slower so if you're a person who's interested in speed then I suggest extreme cross country <laughs> which is something I won't do and to do extreme cross country you have to be very brave and very good at counting I just do not think it appeals to me it is scary it looks scary And then I am actually going to park this thread a bit further down because I will pick it up again and carry on. So I'm doing my crosses in all the same direction. I'm doing bottom left to top right and then bottom right to top left. That is the, the way I'm going. Come on now. Now I have to actually count to where I got to park. So here. So there we have it. I've got a little more done on this beautiful chart and um, later on I will come back and do some more of this black here. Um, this is all just black. So that is TV stitching to be honest um, but not around here. I can see a lovely pattern forming here as well the more of these stitches that I do and yeah there's some lovely things being revealed in this pattern which I'm really keen on and it's lovely to see them getting revealed it's kind of like a little jigsaw puzzle and as you fill in the little squares more of the jigsaw emerges you know that's kind of how it feels when you're stitching this way so that's my stitching session today and I'm going to take a little break now and I just want to say thanks for joining me thanks for watching Thanks for your comments. Thanks for listening. It's been great. And I'm really pleased that I was able to, um, you know, spare the time to sit down and do a stitch with me lately. It's been a bit hectic. So I hope I can do another one again very soon. And I hope I can come back this weekend to do another live. So yes, that's me done for today. So thanks for joining me again. And I shall see you soon. Bye for now.